What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Shared Screens podcast, the podcast here at Shared Screens, where there is no specific topic, there is no specific show, there is just a group of friends hanging out, shooting the shit, and today... The parents are gone and they left the kids alone. And guess what? We're going to throw a fucking party, guys, because it's just me, your host, Jordan Deep, with, of course, Lear and Jess. And it's just us, which I think is something we've joked about doing for a long time. And I know everybody's but never like, done. We've never. I mean, we've done it on our own. And like everyone else in the group is always afraid of. But like, we're going to be OK. Things will be cool. Yeah, I mean, it's like we said, like, it's not like, you know, we're going to say some crazy shit here. I mean, we might say, we're not going to say anything bad, but I won't say we won't say crazy shit. We might say shit Jordan says things to me. Yeah, sometimes Jordan says things to me that just, whoa. (laughs) Any favorites? Any, like, top 10 out-of-pocket stuff? I don't know. Because it's like, a lot of them I also just, like, don't retain. Or you don't want to say on the podcast. Yeah, or there's the ones, the top three that come to mind. I, you, you, you we have had the conversation that you don't want it in content. So <laughs> yeah. we just are going to roll with it. <laughs> love that, um, love that. How have you been? Because I feel like me and you have just like been missing a lot on phone tag like this past week. I know, it's been such a crazy week. Like I found a dead cat, you know. Oh God. My car you want, got you want, you want, you want which one do you okay which one of those do you want to tell first because i feel like you also didn't i'll talk about the the, i'll talk about the dead cat first i don't really want to talk about my car because i still get upset but i'll talk about i'll talk about the cat i have the car back that's the only my car got towed but i have the car back um but the dead cat yeah uh at my job my job is right in the middle of this little like downtown not like a downtown like how would you describe it because like my go-to is it's like oh it's like the town of the village of fishkill but that only works for people who know fishkill new york it's it's like a I guess the best way to describe it would be like a town square plus. Yeah. Like it's a very centralized area. It's a little roundabout that has like a tiny park in the middle. It's it got is a, bunch a walkable of shops. city. It is a 15 yeah. minute city. We all need them. Yeah, I can walk to work, all that kind of crap. Um, but on days I don't walk to work, and since it's been raining so much in California, I haven't been walking to work. Um because I don't want to get caught in an atmospheric river and swept away <laughs> listen there are some there are some uh weather terms that i s- feel like come straight out of mortal Kombat sometimes like oh, atmospheric river fucking polar vortex like these are these are superpowers these are not yeah. weather terms. these are D D moves like <laughs> this is these are spells your druid casts on like you know an orc yeah. um but yeah, so I go, if I drive in and it ends up being sunny on my 15 minute breaks, I'll go for like a little walk around like the area my office is in. I read a book, I drink my coffee, you know, it's very it girl, TikTok it girl energy. Um, Love that for you. And right across from my job is a senior center. And I usually walk past the senior center to go into this more like suburban area because I get to see other people's pet cats that sit out on their porch i give them little pets i see lizards it's a great time for me um and i'm going and i see on the sidewalk a cat laying down on its side it is super sunny out it's like the first day it's been 70 something or above in like weeks um so i think the cat is sunning itself and you know me i'm gonna go up and give the cat a little scritch um the cat is not moving. I just think it's asleep. It hasn't heard me. And I'm like, you know, sometimes I look at Cleo and I think Cleo's dead. So, like, oh it's fine. Sometimes when Cleo, I don't know if she's in here. Yeah, she's not in here. But sometimes when Cleo is asleep, like, it's you got to look for the stomach rising and falling or else she looks dead. Um. Anyway, uh, I come up upon this cat. This cat is still not moving. I reach down to touch it. Nothing. Nothing. It doesn't move. It doesn't do anything. And I'm like looking at it. I'm like, I don't think it's breathing. I, that's super not breathing. I come around to where I can see its face and its eyes are open and empty, just staring. And like, oh, it really upset me. And Jordan, I really had, I stood there for about five minutes debating with myself if I could pick up the dead cat body and bring it back to my office because I felt so bad leaving it there. Like, I felt awful. I was, like, almost in tears at the idea of leaving it there. But I knew if I brought a dead cat back to my office, all of my coworkers were going to be like, Learen, what the fuck? Like, for so many reasons. Because, like, not even the fact that 
oh, one of our newer employees just bust in with a dead cat she found on the side of the road. Like not even getting into what that is going to make them start thinking. What are they going to do? <laughs> yeah, like what do you want us to do with this it's, dead it's, cat? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to bury it now? Like what are you doing? It's not like you're, It's not like it was choking and you're like, somebody please save the cat. Like it was dead. Yeah, there was nothing anyone could do. And like, so I left it there and I went back and I was like, okay, there are, there are like a lot of the people that work for my company are like around our age, they're younger, but there are some like what I call adults where it's like people with children. And I was like, I'll go ask, I'll go ask them like what I should do because I feel like I should do something like you. there's a dead cat on the sidewalk. Like something needs to be done here. Also, what I fucking hate about myself is as I am walking back to my office, the raccoon story from Greg Miller is just playing in my brain. Where you thought maybe what this cat was playing possum and like was going to be rabid? No. Oh, no. I got very The cat was absolutely dead. I made sure of it. Um, well, no, because I work right near an animal hospital. So if I had like gone up to the cat and realized it was like in the process of dying, I absolutely would have gone full on saving Private Ryan, thrown that cat over my shoulder and run down the like four or five blocks, whatever it is, to the animal hospital and been like, I just found this cat. You have to save it. <laughs> like, um, Absolutely. I know how to do CPR on cats. Like, ooh, if it was alive, I would have tried to, like, assist it. But, um, hi, Miss Weech. Yeah, no idea how I go about doing CPR on a cat. You can look it up. There are ways. If you are a pet owner, I mean, you're not a pet owner, but if you are a pet owner, you can look up how to do CPR on your pets. Is it the same way as doing it on a baby? Where, like, you sit them on your knee and you use your thumbs? Um, depending for cats and, like, small dogs, kind of. And it's that you, like, hold their snoot closed so that you're forcing all the air into their nose. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not the um, stuff with babies. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's kind of the gist. Like, I mean, if you you Google it, there are there are like charts that'll show you what it looks like. Yeah. I don't it's not that I'm cruel. I just feel like if I came across an animal that was like already dead or in the process and I didn't know anything about it, I'd be afraid that it was gonna be carrying some disease. Well, okay, so this is the other thing that I told my mother is that as I'm kneeling over this cat trying to decide what to do, um, I also realized that Cleo had fleas for a period of time last year or two years ago, and it was fucking awful. (laughs) They were a bitch to get rid of. I had to give her a ton of baths. It was fucking awful. And I was like, this looks like the stray that hangs out in our parking lot at my job it may have fleas and I don't want to bring them home to Cleo and like me touching the cat I may not give anything to myself but there are things that I could bring home to Cleo so I was like I really can't touch this cat um so I go back in I like scrub my arms and hands like you know early days of COVID when you were using burning hot water and going all the way up to your elbows And then I went into my office and I was like, so I just found a dead cat and like, I don't know what to do. Please assist. (laughs) Um, And somebody was like, oh, you can probably call animal control. And I was like, oh, yeah. And so I Google it and like animal control was like, yeah, if you're unfortunate enough to find a a dead animal, like call us and we'll come get it. So I call animal control at 1030 on Thursday morning. I call animal control. They're like, okay. I tell them exactly where the cat is, the cross street, what it is in front of, what the cars near it looked like, telling them exactly where it is. I go out for my next walk at three something that afternoon and the cat is still there. I am upset all over again. And I'm like, okay, like, I mean, I guess, but I called like five hours ago. I feel like they should be here by now. Like, da-da-da-da. You don't know what calls they got that day. Maybe somebody showed up with like an alligator and they're like, well, now this is our priority. Still, I just, I feel like somebody should get the day. De- this is going to traumatize a toddler or a senior walking out of the senior center. Um, And then we are all leaving at like 5, 30, 6 o'clock heading home. The cat is still there. The next day. One of my other coworkers who doesn't work in my office a ton comes in and is like, yeah, last night I was coming in here for dinner and there was like a a dead cat on the sidewalk. I was like, I know they finally picked it up at some time on Friday morning. But I feel like that was like a really long time to leave the dead cat body there. Yeah, probably. Like, 
Especially, we have a lot of crows in this area. Do you know what a crow can do to a dead body? Like, fuck. Make it um, into roadkill. Yeah, it's gross. But yeah, so that just, you know, really, <laughs> really ruined my week. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, I'm a psychopath, so I've got into, like, episode 55 of the first campaign of Critical Role. Wow. To be fair, I started at episode 25 because I've watched Legends of Vox Machina and so I knew I knew everything up to that point already. I, I watched yeah. you know, the show and it's pretty. The Briarwood arc in Critical Role in their first campaign is almost shot for shot what the first season of the show is with the exception of a couple of episodes. Um but yeah, I've just, it's become my like thing to listen to while I work because like it like fits that it holds my attention and it's interesting. But if I miss a couple of things, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Like I told uh, you, I think I'm going to try to finish the, the, the Hyperforce RPG that I was listening to earlier this mm-hmm. year or, or later last year before I, I start getting into a critical role like you're recommending, just because I'm at least familiar enough with that fandom and canon and I'm already halfway into that campaign. Uh-huh. And it's a simpler campaign in like mechanics before I dive into like a straight up D and D with a bunch of D and D like people who like know it so well. And type this of is campaign. a game that they've been playing. The first campaign is a game that they had been playing for years, even before the stream started. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just have which to, is like, why I like was watching videos of all these people on YouTube and TikTok of people being like, honestly, if you want to get into Critical Role, just watch the first season of Legends of Vox Machina and then and now watch the second season because the second season just dropped and covers the whole Chroma Conclave arc um, and then just jump in. The only thing that I think you get more out of the D&D is mild spoilers, but Vecna is a big bad later on in critical role in the first campaign, the Legends of Vox Machina campaign. And you get more of like who that is sprinkled in throughout the Briarwood and Chroma Conclave. Gotcha. Arc. Like, I didn't know Vecna was going to be a part of it until I got to that in the actual D&D campaign. They don't really talk about it in the anime, which I think is probably partly because <laughs> it came out around the same time as the fourth season of Stranger Things, which in Stranger Things, they just call all of the monsters they fight D&D names. Um, yeah, I was going to joke. I was like, I thought Vecna was from Stranger Things because I don't watch Stranger Things. I've never seen so heard about the it. The Demogorgon, Demodogs, the Mind Flayer, Vecna, that's all shit from D&D. Oh, but these... Demod- okay. I didn't know yeah. that Demogorgon was from D&D. Yeah, and it's because like what it is is basically like they're playing a campaign that revolves around the Demogorgon right before Will gets kidnapped in the fir- kidnapped in the first season. And so when they start seeing these monsters that kind of look like these D&D things, it's just what they call them because it's like, we all play D&D. We all understand this reference. So if I say to you, this is like the mind flayer, you get what I'm talking about without me having to explain well, it. Yeah, and I, it's like, I, I think it's, I don't know if me and you came across some fucking underground portal to hell and like, you know, little beetle aliens started crawling out of it. I mean, you were like, oh yeah, we'll just gonna call them the chitari because we don't know what these things it are works. i don't know like in our it, brain it works. It works. yeah i don't know what the proper like latin name of this species fucking is yeah like so because like in D D, vecna is a fictional character uh that is one of the greatest villains in the D franchise a once human king um who is now basically ascended to like being a god i guess and he's like this scary god of the undead and like can like whisper in people's ears and like all this kind of stuff and so yeah when they get a russian telepathic science experiment that can kind of do the same thing i mean i guess he's not russian he's american but you get this weird science experiment that can kind of do the same thing it's like we all understand you know if we call him vecna we're all on the same page here (laughs) Sorry, when you said God of the Undead, I just, my mind went to that Drake and Josh meme where they just block out the different 
when Josh goes, I do not control the speed at which lobsters die. Uh, and then people, yes. they just block out different words to control the, to, to, to make I do not control about, the lobsters. I do not control the die. The I control die. the speed of the die. Yeah. Which is yeah. like, just, they describe like four different Greek gods. Uh, yeah. No, I do know what you're talking about. Meme is um, never not funny to me. Drake and Josh, never not funny to me. No, it's a it's a it's a good show. It's a good also. I really I think I've said this to you before. Josh Peck's book is really good. Yeah, I I saw clips of his uh, podcast that he was doing with Hillary Duff, which I'm sure they were doing just because they are now co stars on How I Met Your Father. But like they were actually talking about the whole child star industry and like the differences that he went through and she went through, both probably just like in age and gender, but also like the Nick versus the Disney life and aspect and like. If I remember correctly, Hillary Duff's home life, even before she became a child star, was relatively Was it bad? Because I know his was stable. bad. I, oh, yeah. Hers was more stable. And his was like, I know his dad was never in his life. Yeah. Yeah. And like, because he didn't want to be. Like, <laughs> not like, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. I had an affair when I slept with your mom and I have a whole other family that I don't want knowing about you. Yeah. Um, I feel like the only thing that would have made his dad more scummy is, is when Josh Peck became famous as a child and he was like, well, now I do want to be in your life. Yeah. Um, yeah, her parents are just like, I mean, her mom is a film producer now, but like her parents were just like people. Yeah. Like they weren't he, anything. Yeah. She was also like before, I think, the bigger Disney Channel stars that like we think of now. And they didn't make her sing. Yeah, she actually talked about how she wanted to sing and Disney was kind of like, eh. Yeah, she, and that, they weren't full into that. Okay, we hire people that can star in shows, be a personality, and will drop music and go on tours. She wasn't, like, part of that yet. Yeah. Whereas, like, now, it's like, you gotta be quadruple threats for Disney to even look at you. Yeah, although I feel like they backed off that, too, because, like, yeah. Olivia Rodrigo isn't signed with Disney. Yeah, that's true. And neither is Josh Bassett, which I think, honestly, with what he's been up to lately, that uh, Disney is like, honestly, thank God. <laughs> Um, they, I, I think they more ended up in the like, hey, we're going to be on a musical show. Clearly there's musical talent in us. And so other people hired them. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, not like when And like literally... she had been in fucking Bizarre Vark or whatever with Jake Paul before High School I Musical. I always forget about that fucking show. That's probably a good thing. I mean, yeah, that was past our time. And it was weird. It was weird. I don't even know what it's about. And I don't want to know. Don't don't fill me in. Don't give me the plot synopsis. Oh, no, I wasn't going. All I was going to give you is that it was like Disney trying to make iCarly. Ooh. Yeah. Like that's essentially, it's essentially they saw how well iCarly was doing and our Car iCarly was ending. So they were like, what if in 2016 we air a show that is kind of a rip of a show that came out years ago? <laughs> I mean, isn't that what... <sighs> Didn't Nick basically try to copy the Hannah Montana format with Big Time Rush? Um, it's I'm not as it's not as much of a one to one because it's like a boy band versus a solo girl. Sorry, but I just it, I think I think in the sense that like the show is named after the band and the music in the show is like real music that they were making. Yeah, I, it just gets into, like, I don't know how much you watched Hannah Montana, but, like, her wanting to be a normal girl was, like, a full-on part of, like, the overall characterization of the show. Oh, I watched like, a the, lot of what, Hannah Montana, don't worry. I mean, I don't know. Like, I really, I really don't know how that works. Because, like, as an adult looking at, like, gender roles that are assigned to children, I would be like, boys would absolutely think that, like, Hannah Montana was stupid. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I had three sisters, and then also, like, I don't know. It was a, it was a big enough thing that you kind of couldn't avoid it. Plus, like, you know, um, Robbie and uh, Jackson. No. Oliver, right? Yep, Oliver. Jackson's the real name of someone? No, Jackson is the brother. 
the guy who played Jackson was a 30 something year old man named uh, Jason Earls and yes. uh, Mitchell Musso played Oliver. And he, when Hannah Montana ended was given another show that he then got fired for because Disney found out what he was doing with underage fans. and was like, no, 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 Yikes. no more, <laughs> no more. Yeah. And then Jason Earls got the karate show, which I never watched. He has a karate was- show. He, yeah. It like was like Johnny was- karate. No, it was uh, it was called Kicking It. It was like on Disney XD. It was like a- oh, it was in the boy. It was on the boys Disney Channel. Yeah, the B- Disney Channel for me. Tell men. me that that's not what Disney XD was. Kinda. No, you're right. Well, it was because yeah, Disney yeah. XD is where Mitchell Musso, M- Mitchell Muse, M- <laughs> Mitchell Musso, Mitchell Musso, Mitchell Musso, Musso, Musso. Never forget when he tried to make music too. Yeah. Um, oh, I loved his music when I was a tween. Yeah, because yeah, there was like an anime block on Disney XD at one point. Well, because wasn't Jet X the precursor to Disney XD? Uh, let me see here. Because Jet X, I remember, is like where the is like where Power Rangers would air when it was in Disney's hands. Um. Oh wow, this was not helpful okay i have no idea it doesn't say either way on the wikipedia page it just says no it just says disney xd was launched on february 13th uh 2009 at 12 a.m eastern with the phineas and ferb episode dude we're getting the band back together being the first the show to phineas air on the ferb. channel the best phineas and ferb episode. the best phineas and ferb episode of course yeah um, jet x is a children's entertainment brand that went from 2004. Oh, the network took over the channel space of Toon Disney, an animation focused channel that debuted in April 18th, 1998, which eventually launched the live action animation block called Jet X. So Jet X wasn't the channel. It was just a block. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, it was, it was weird. Like later on, it became its own channel, but then like Nick did that too, where like T Nick became its own channel and Nick Toons became their own channel once we got like a billion channels. Mm hmm. Don't mind me. I'm just spilling coffee on myself. No, it's fine. I don't remember what Jet X aired other than Power Rangers. I'm going to be honest. Um. Oh, I remember. Now that I'm looking at this logo, I remember this logo. Yeah, he was like a little guy. <laughs> what a terrible description. <laughs> like, what a non-helpful description. <laughs> it, it was, okay, for people who are listening, it is a circle <laughs> with two ears, one eye. It's like always making a winky face and then two little legs. And he's no just, mouth. He's just a... Yeah, he's just a little fella. And his like, ears like, and legs are an X. Like, that's the point. Yeah. He's like he a like, spear on an X. He would like skate in the corner and he was cool. Yeah, because Jet X replaced um, Fox Kids. <laughs> and then Disney ended up with it. Because Fox Kids was when we had four inter- uh, four kids entertainment, which is how I watched uh, Tokyo Mew Mew as a child. Four kids entertainment was a time. We're talking Animaniacs, Pokemon, Mega Man, Batman Beyond. Programming. Um, oh, God, it's big enough that it has its own page. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Wait. Okay. This is why I knew uh, of Jet X. I just unlocked a memory I didn't know I had is anymore. It, is it there because was of a f- witch? Yes. I'm looking at the list right now. Yeah. And- yes, it's because of which I forgot about this show. I wonder if I can find this anywhere. Yeah, I, I forgot how much this. of this was like. See, okay, so this is why I didn't. Disney XD was probably like the boys' Disney, but to me, Jet X came off more as a competitor to Cartoon Network's Tanami. I don't know what if that is because I wasn't allowed to watch Cartoon Network. Okay, so like there was a block of Cartoon Network that would air like the hour before before Adult Swim, where it was basically how a bunch of people got exposed to anime. And like I'm I'm dropping like the oh anime is for weeb's bit here. Like I'm just I'm being serious. And there was it was like it was a robot who was like today we're what and it was like where Dragon Ball Z and Naruto would air at night on Cartoon Network. And so Jet X always felt like it was more competitor to that. It's not available to stream anywhere. Come on, Disney. Give me Witch and give me House of Mouse. And then I'll never talk shit about you again. Oh, I forgot. I loved this show. I loved this show. Yeah, I never really watched it. It. 
I actually can't say if it holds up or not because I don't really remember. But like I love, I had action figures. Like I loved it. It was like an emo Winx Club, and it was everything I needed. Yeah. The thing is, I also didn't watch the one right under it, which is Adam, which is also a acronym like which, and I assume what one was the guy branded show and one was the girl branded show, even though they no, don't exist in the same were, universe. Well, Kind, they weren't in a shared universe, but they were made by the same French animation company. Yeah, yeah, they gave off the same vibes. Yeah, and they're uh, there because there is a girl in Adam, but it was like a superhero show versus like a Winx Club show. <laughs> um, I didn't watch Adam much, but like I knew what it was. Um, good lord. What caught your attention? I can see the little cogs in your brain turning. <laughs> okay, so I'm under the JetX play, and there's a lot of, like, Saban's Around the World in 80 Dreams, Saban's Adventures of Oliver Twist. And then I saw Saban's Adventures of the Little Mermaid, but that's not the same as the Little Mermaid cartoon. No, which slapped, by the way. Yeah, I just I just didn't know Saban ever made anything besides Power Rangers, not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm surprised that they made Oliver Twist. That, yeah, that was also one that stuck out to me. Do you? ever feel like oliver twist as we have gotten older is just falling further and further out of pop culture when we were children it was pushed as like a fun kid story here i i have seen an actual production of oliver same and i've been in it three times you see i saw it as like a teen and so i was like oh it's literally just annie but in the past like further in the past and in england and in Daddy it's Warbucks darker. doesn't actively try to exploit Annie. <laughs> okay, it's 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 definitely like dark. It's definitely like Annie was like, "Hey, let's try to polish up Oliver for the American audience." Yeah, let's make this not depressing as fuck because it's depressing as shit until the last like thirty minutes when his grandfather finds him. Spoilers for yeah. Oliver, but <laughs> at this point, Oliver feels more like a fairy tale than it does like a piece of literature. I don't well, know if that makes sense. No, because this is where I'm going is I remember Oliver being one of the big ones that like they publish a lot of like um, abridgments for kids. And I remember being there being one when I was a kid. So there was the Oliver and Company movie, which is a Disney movie that retells Oliver Twist with music by Billy Joel and Oliver is a cat and everybody else is dogs. It's a very cute movie. I highly recommend is it but kind then, of like, and I know that you like this movie, so you might not like this comparison, but is it kind of like how they made Robin Hood with dogs? They were like, let's just make Oliver Twist with animals as well. You mean that they made Robin Hood with, with just animals? They're not just dogs. I've only There's ever only seen like the one dog in that movie. <laughs> I've only ever seen the fucking cover, Liren. I'm sorry. He's a fox. <laughs> Can you not tell that he's a fox? Is a fox not dog adjacent? No, I actually think they're more uh, closely related to cats. Interesting. Like, that's not even a joke. I'm, like, 99% sure that we, like, found out within the last, like, 15 years that they're not really canines. Yeah. Uh, don't quote me on that. I could be misunderstanding something. And I also could be, like, that could just be something my brain created. Like, I don't know. But um, there was a book series where yeah, we no, were kids. Yeah, no, foxes are canines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe it's there's some animal that we learned like within the last 10 years is more closely related to a cat than a dog and I don't remember which one it was I, I, can, conf I can confirm that it's not foxes, wolves, ja or jackals is those hyenas? are all under the canine cat or dog okay hyenas are neither they're just their own thing that's fun good for them <laughs> See, sometimes I see pictures of hyenas, of hyenas, and I'm like, wow, the Lion King really wasn't exaggerating with no, what these things look like. No, they're fucking weird looking. Like, they are so weird. It just, it's like they're always under static electricity. Why is his hair up like that? I, they just, they are so strange looking. And the noise they make, like that laughing noise they make is legitimately off-putting. But anyways, Oliver Twist. Um, there was a book that it's not the Animorphs. It's not that shit. But like the dog, it's like a dog was Oliver Twist. And this was like a series where this dog would be main a main character in like an abridged version of a classic. Dog version of Oliver 
twist book because I just remember this like Jack Russell Terrier on the cover dressed as like a 17th century orphan. Yeah, Wishbone Classics. Did you guys have these in your school library? No, I cannot say I did. Yes, but you, A, do you see what I mean by it is literally just like a Jack Russell Terrier dressed as like a yes. child. Also, like, the stories they gave this dog. Yeah, dude. I'm seeing Joan of Arc, Frankenstein, Tom Sawyer. and No, they did Moby Dick. They did Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde as well, which I don't know much about that. Is that even for kids? No, it's super fucking dark. So is Moby Dick. Like, that's what I mean is that, like, they pick these books that are, like, really strange. And then there was a television show, like, because I remember there being, like, I don't know if it was a movie or a TV show, but it was, like, the dog that's, like, on the cover was, it's just, like, dressed as Robin Hood and some shit. Um. Yeah. There was, like, a Wishbone TV series, and it starred a dog named Soccer, and they did, like, Don Quixote and all this shit. It was weird as fuck. Very weird. <laughs> I'm glad that I can can introduce you to the- this is what we had in my, um- I can't say much. I showed you what Challenge Showdown was, and you still insist that was a fever dream I've had. So, like- Yeah, but these were, like, in my- Catholic school library, which just feels like a, a weird... I mean, considering the first one that popped up on Google for me was Joan of Arc, I was like, oh, I see why this was in a Catholic school. <laughs> Here's the thing. As somebody who went to Catholic school for nine years, I don't know shit about Joan of Arc. <laughs> like, I feel like... I feel like I should, too. Like, I know she was, like, a 13-year-old girl who, like, died for God or some shit like that. But beyond that, like... I think she's just so connected to, like, France. Once she was like 19. Oh. Not like 13. But yeah, I Did think she's she just so. Start doing her thing when she was 13, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, she's she just was so like young, to... though. They like just straight up kind of murdered a child. Yeah, yeah she, she later so testified that she, when she was 13, a figure she identified as St. Michael surrounded by angels appeared to her in a garden. That's where I got the, the 13 thing. <laughs> Wild, absolutely wild. Um, but yeah, we I remember though they did show us a movie where we watched a child get uh, I don't know if it was Joan of Arc or somebody else, but these three girls get like boiled to death in oil because they claim that the Virgin Mary came to them or some shit like that. Don't make that face. Like I don't know what to tell you. The movies they show you when you go to Catholic school are weird. Like was it was it Virgin Olive Oil? oh my god um what is it too soon for the fictional dead kids but that's the thing is i don't think it was fictional oh where three girls die for seeing the virgin mary google is gonna be like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> Oh, the movie, yeah, The Miracle of Our Lady Fatima. It came out in the 50s, based on the true events of 1917 when three Portuguese children shared a miraculous uh, vision of the Virgin Mary. See, I didn't I went, make it up. <laughs> I went to CCD and we watched weird films there too. Like there's, I don't know what they showed us, but it was like a a, a kid who like, I think he like stole from like, a, a general store or something and then felt such guilt about it in the middle of the night he like got up went to his desk and like they like just show him drawing because like he wasn't wanted to be an artist and when he gets up he just drew like an incredibly accurate pencil sketch of jesus <laughs> i'm not why? making this <laughs> like why <laughs> the guilt came to him and god was like i'm gonna speak to you through your own drawing so god <laughs> spoke to this child through his own art to be like jesus is watching you sh so you shouldn't steal Oh my god, wait, not this has nothing to do with Jesus. This just has to do with movies I was shown in middle school. Were you ever shown the anti-drinking movie um thing in middle school where it's about teen a teenage boy who he gets drunk and drives and murder accidentally kills one of his classmates in a drunk driving accident and he gets in like huge trouble for it. And then when they're in court, 
the girl that he killed, their parents are like, we want this like million dollar payout that he has to make in a hundred dollar increments every day so that they can force this kid to think about what he did every day and he it like fucks him up so bad mentally that he writes out like an entire year worth of checks and tries to deliver them and the dad straight up of the girl who died straight up no i want you to come to my house because i want you to have to remember this every day i don't want in 20 years that you like forget that you did this and then one day get behind the wheel and kill your family and that's really dark (laughs) and like the movie just ends with no like like that's just his life now no um see in middle school a lot of our don't do drugs or don't have sex videos came from our home ec teacher showing us early 80s degrassi even better. I love that. I also don't However, know. However, as somebody who has watched all of Degrassi, I feel like they never actually have to pay the consequences for underage drinking. I mean, yeah, the drinking, they kind of yada yada, but then like our lesson on why not to do LSD is like that one kid jumped off a bridge because he didn't think it was that far off the ground. And then all the girls that watched current Degrassi is like, isn't that the principal now? And the teacher was like, yeah, shut up. Just watch this version. No, that's not the principal now. That's not who jumps over. It's just no, Emma's, I know. Emma's his, actual his biological father. Yes, his friend. But the one who goes, because you, they brought that guy back for an episode of Degrassi, The Next Generation, because that the guy. The one who jumps over the bridge and has like permanent brain damage? Yeah, because that guy is the one who got Spike pregnant. Pregnant. Yeah, that I know. And so that's Emma, who is one of the main characters in Degrassi, The Next Generation. That is her father. Like, and her mom doesn't really talk about her dad and so when she finds out like where her father is and why it happened and all of this shit like she and then she goes to see him and then he comes to their house and like holds snake at gunpoint because he's like very mentally unwell like i can't believe spike and snake are the characters that got together yeah and then darcy accuses snake of assaulting her because she was essayed but by somebody she didn't know and she's not handling it right and so she tries to have sex with snake and snake is like whoa no 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 we're not doing this as well not in middle school i've just seen it around the internet yeah and then i always found snake sexier than a panther is the exact line i will remember that till the day i die (laughs) as for the as for the drunk driving thing and I don't think I've ever told you this, and I feel like you're going <laughs> to, this is going to be another one of your, you went to a weird high school, Jordan, that you like to do. One of the things they used to do but around prom time was like kids that were like in drama club would like volunteer. Yes, we did this too. Okay, I refused too. to be in it. <laughs> yeah, we're like, they'd volunteer to like, they'd, they'd have two cars that they got from the fire department that were already trashed. They'd flip one over in the parking lot. They'd like basically dress these kids up as they they though they went through a horrible car crash and they were like imagine if one of your classmates killed another one of your classmates like you have to watch it i know we did this but for some reason when it came time for our prom i think they went hey that's a little overboard and so they just brought in a man who was a victim of a drunk driving crash like survived obviously they didn't bring in a corpse but like <laughs> God, I, yeah i assumed you know he had um uh, brain injuries and physical injuries from it and was kind of just like talking to us about his life and you know the lesson was like don't drink and drive so here's the thing um ketchum did that but around when i was like a sophomore they stopped asking the kids who were in the actual drama club to do it because they wouldn't because they all drank like fish um so, like, it started being, did you guys have a, the SAD club at SPAC? Students Against Drunk Driving? No. We did, and it was all the straight-edge kids who were in it, and so they ended up being the ones that did it, and you had to go stand outside and watch a fake drunk driving accident. And, like, why it was dumb to us, too, is our prom was at West Point. We got breathalyzed three times on the way in. Nobody was sneaking alcohol into prom. They searched your car, they searched the limo, and you took a breathalyzer three times throughout the night. Like, 
it is not physically possible on West Point to like <laughs> for us so to be I'm, underage drinking. That shit was happening when we had gone home to parties. So I'm going to have to ask my sister about that because her prom was at West Point. And I'm, she never mentioned any of that. So part of me is wondering, like, did your school just breathalyze all of you guys three times? It was the West Point, like, hmm. military guys. And it's because of Jay. It's because of the other school in my district. They used to have their prom at West Point, and then they fucking trashed the hotel room that they got at the Thayer and trashed the venue. And they're not allowed to have their prom there anymore. Yeah. And catch them put yeah. like the fear of God in us that if we ever did that, we'd be like, that they would just like cancel our prom. It wouldn't be like, oh, we're moving it. But if any of you guys do that, there just won't be a prom anymore. As far as I know, there was no crazy prom stories in the grades above us. So everything for our proms went kind of like normal. You also went to a smaller school than me, though. Yeah. Kid tried to strip naked at my prom. Good for him. Yep. In the middle of the dance floor. And he was surrounded by other people. So like he was the teachers go- he was- trying to get to him, trying to get him to stop taking off his clothing. We're struggling. Was he-, was he going to college for a Magic Mike scholarship? No, but he was a football player. I hope that paints the image in your head of this entire situation. He was like, hey, listen, football doesn't work out or I get a bum knee, can't go pro. This body's going to be useful for something. <laughs> yeah, he was just like this. He was like my height, really stocky. Um, and he wore... Uh, black tux with a pink vest and a pink bow tie. And at one point in the night, he was wearing his tux pants, the vest, and the bow tie. <laughs> and that was it. Literally. Honestly, Literally don't know what happened to outfit. the jacket or the button down. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> they were in the back of his mom's Honda Odyssey that he got to use for the night. <laughs> yeah. Um, I ugh. laugh and ask as if my mom didn't have a minivan for a majority of my life. <laughs> Yeah, my mom got rid of the minivan once I was, like, out of eighth grade. Yeah, Partly there was because only she two got in a car you. accident and the minivan was totaled. But, um, oh, you know. That too. But yeah, there was only two of you. So, like. Yeah. My family needed the minivan a bit longer. Um, Sorry, I'm looking. <laughs> You're still looking at looking. the JetX lineup? No, at the Wishbone episodes that they did, like, the Odyssey and Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> We watched the 1960s Romeo and Juliet in ninth grade. Ooh, what a great movie. I wasn't in, I had the same teacher as other kids, but in one of the other like periods where she was doing the same thing, she like got distracted and forgot to cut away from the, the nudity scene in time. And, you know, every kid in class was hype <laughs> or every boy in that class was just very hype. They're yeah. like, hell yeah, we're seeing titties in school. And like, she was like, no. And like trying to cover it up, but it was a smart board. So then it would just pro- project onto her. <laughs> yeah. Um, She was a hot teacher too. I watched that movie when I was like 10 with my mom. And my sister. Fun. Yeah. Well, because my mom loves that movie. We own it. Like my mother has it on VHS. Yeah. Um, She loves that movie. Uh, and my sister, you have to remember when I was like 10, my sister was in high school. So, so she, she was, was reading, reading Romeo it. and Juliet. Yeah. And my mom was like, do you want to watch this movie? And Kayla was like, yeah, sure. And then my mom was like, Liren, want to watch with us? And I was like, sure. And I got bored about halfway through it because like, I didn't really understand what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> like, I also, I feel like there's a difference in letting a girl see a topless scene than a room full of teenage boys see a topless scene. And, like, not even because of, like, oh, you shouldn't be seeing titties. It's just you're going to be annoying about it. Yeah, because we don't get to see a lot of titties at that age. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like, probably rightfully so. But, like, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, like, I don't know. It's, it's, ah. Uh, I just, the one scene I really clearly remember isn't even the sex scene. It's when Romeo gets banished for killing Tybalt. Yeah, for killing Tibble? No, he kills him later. Killing. I only re- I only remember the boobs. Be- I'm gonna be straight with you. He Do you kills... not remember any other part of that movie? I think he kills. Who? Romeo kills somebody. He either kills rest- Tybalt or Re- Mercutio, right? Like he kills one of them for killing the other. I just forget who he... belongs to which Mercutio side. Mercutio is his BFF. So and... then, yeah, he kills Tybalt. Yeah. Um. I yeah, that's what I couldn't remember because oh, I know what it is. I'm confusing it with. This is, okay, I'm about to take you on a journey. I was in Romeo and Juliet, or senior year of high school, right? Um, 
the guy who played Paris, the man that Julia is supposed to marry, and the guy who played Tybalt were boyfriends. <laughs> So I couldn't remember if he and and Romeo kills both Tibble and Paris. He kills Paris later on. And so I couldn't remember which one he killed first. I'm going to have to tell you something off air. Oh, well, actually, no, I, I can say it now. I'm just not going to use names. That's fine. I didn't use names. I went when I was in community college. I met two people you went to high school with. And I thought they were dating and they weren't. They were just best friends. So in my head, when you said that these two actors were dating, I was like, maybe it was them. Yeah, no. Um, also, I love the description for this Wishbone Romeo and Juliet because it's found without his collar. Wishbone is taken to the pound where he falls in love with a female dog named Rosie. After being rescued, he conspires to lose his collar again to get back to his love. Meanwhile, Sam, Wishbone's owner, also falls in love with Rosie and seeks to adopt her. Weird. Um... And then, Why were they like, hey, let's tell these classic <laughs> stories, but with a dog? And then, well, what I enjoy is the episode Bone of Ark, which is, A, sounds like a porno. And B, I was going to say, it sounds, it sounds like the, the porn parody of Joan of Arc. Which absolutely exists. I'm on it. Um, please don't. Please don't. I'm not going to share my screen. I don't even think you can do that on Zencaster. Thank God. Okay, I search Bone of Arc and all I get are the Wishbone episodes. Interesting, but I like that the description on Wikipedia, where I'm going with this, for this Joan of Arc retelling is just, Sam joins the boys' soccer team. Lee Aaron. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I found... Hold on. I just have what to see What is happening? This... <laughs> Use your words. Come on. <laughs> Well, before I... Sh okay. You I found a BuzzFeed article. <laughs> because Wishbone uses a lot of bone puns. Is this Wishbone or is this porn? Oh, I love this. Wait, can we take it? Yes. It doesn't... All the pictures are no longer available. And I'm assuming they were pictures of the Wishbone episode and then like a generic pornographic screenshot. Frankenbone. Is that the, the Frankenstein Wishbone telling or is that the, the porn parody? Okay, this was one of the ones we owned, so I know Frankenbone is is Wishbone. Correct. Okay. Moonbone. That's got to be a porno. What could that be a retelling of? No, it's Wishbone season two based on Wilkie Collins no scratching detective novel, The Moonstone. Oh. Okay. Uh, bone Appetit, but it's Bone B-O-N-E. Well, yeah, because it's really Bon Appetit, not Bone. <laughs> I got that it was B-O-N-E when you said Bone. I, I you forget what the correct pronoun pronunciation is. My God. Um, hmm. That's okay. That is because it's not like they're retelling Ratatouille, you know, like. But that also seems like a really fancy name for a porno. They could all be pretending to be French. Let's guess the porno. Yeah, because like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what yeah. that would. It, it is. It is. I just like how I go, you know, when you click on like the first one, it goes, yes, it's Wishbone season two. And it like tells you the origin. This one for Bon Appetit goes, correct. It's porn. Like there is no further discussion. We're not going there. Uh, bone of Arc. We already discussed. We already we know, know that's Bone of Arc. We know that's Wishbone. Okay. Romancing the bone. That sounds like you're like snake charming someone's dick. <laughs> Which probably exists, but like, cause there's, I feel like there, you know, there's porn for everything, but, um. Oh yeah. Cause I've always just wanted somebody to like, I don't know what the dog a recorder. would, I don't know what the dog would be romancing though. It's porn based very loosely on the novel Romancing the Stone. Oh, God. Well, now I need to know what that is. Hang on. Romance. Well, ro romancing. Now, Romancing the Stone's actually a novel, so like, don't expect anything too weird to pop up. Oh, it's a series. Oh, my God. There's a movie version starring Danny DeVito. 
It's an action adventure romantic comedy. Um, wait, is this based on the book? Hang on. The Romancing the Stone novel. Yeah, I gotta search novel. It looks okay, like it's a not a very page. big novel and that the movie expanded on it because they're only a year apart. But yeah. That's also a very racy cover. Well, yeah, it's a romance novel. Yeah, uh, I'm on its Goodreads page and it's um, Joan Wilder is a lonely New York, New York romance novelist who receives a treasure map mailed to her by her recently murdered brother-in-law on her way to Carta sorry if I pronounce this wrong Cartagena, Colombia Car- Car- something Col- to Colombia um, Joan ends up in the jungle but is saved by American bird exporter Jack T. Colton for getting her safely to her destination Joan promises to pay Jack $375 or one night. All right, number six on this wishbone or porn. We have Rosio Rosio. That's the Romeo and Juliet one. That's wish poem. Yes. Like you get okay. it? You get the pawn? Yes. So I, I don't know why they did that. Because literally the next one is Romeo and Juliet. So yeah, I that's assume that one's the porn. That's a porny. Although I imagine there's like a million porns based on Romeo and Juliet. Oh, absolutely. I dream of Weenie. That's so funny. That's so fun. Um, that feels like something a like 30 year old or no, like a 50 year old marketing woman for like Harper Collins or whatever this is in the 80s thought was like a cute dog pun. But it's also, oh, really? like, I feel like some of these are definitely, like, the both. Yeah, because I also could see, like, when was... I, I Dream of Genie was on in, what, like, the 60s? Yeah, 50s, 60s, sometime around there. Yeah, and so, like, in the 80s, like, the person whose sexual awakening was the girl in the little genie outfit became a porn executive. He was like, I know what we're making. Oh, my God. Uh, let's Let's guess with Wishbone. Okay. Is it? I feel like it might be. No, it's porn. Okay. Well. Panton at the opera. That has to be a porn. If this is a wishbone novel, uh, that person should have been fired. It's wishbone. Uh, is it a retelling of Phantom of the Opera? Yes. Good. Okay, so is be? the dog Christine or is the dog the Phantom? <laughs> Who is who is who in this situation? I don't know. A bone of contention. That is a fake thriller novel in Bones written by one of the main characters. And it is later turned into a movie called The Bone of Contention. Unfortunately, that's not a guess here. It's either porn or wishbone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like that has to be Wishbone because if it's a, if it's a porn name, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, a steamy story of crossed swords. That also sounds pornographic. Based on Henry Wad Smith Longfellow's epic swords poem. Or like peepees. Uh, the courtship of Miles Standish. It's based off of that. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Hercules Unbound. I'm uncomfy. <laughs> okay, that means I'm um, guessing porn. I, f- I, I just feel like there are other, other like better titles if you're retelling Hercules with Wishbone. Yeah, no, it, it was porn. Okay, number twelve, hot diggity dog, dog spelled D A W G. Um. <laughs> This is either going to be a problematic porno or wishbone. I think it's wishbone because I can't imagine people got to be smarter than naming a porno that. 
Yes, based on H.G. Wells' insightful account of the wonders of digging, Journey to the Center of the Earth. <laughs> would if not you have given me a million guesses. <laughs> that is not, not what I, no. <laughs> no, not what it, okay. This, mm. I'm assuming Wishbones hasn't continued into the modern era. Why? Because number 13 is Game of Bones. Okay, so Wishbone came out in the 90s where, like, the book Game of Thrones would have been out. However, Game of Bones is a very popular Game of Thrones porno. That is correct. Yeah. It says, can you guess which HBO series it's based on? I I have seen screen caps of this porno because, like, it was meme to shit if you were, like, into Game of Thrones. Russian to the bone. Is this like uh, to Russia with love, but wishbone? <laughs> I guess. Is that what we're going for? Because again, oh. I just feel like Russian to the bone is a lazy porn name. Russian to the bone is basically my high school experience. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I was Russian. Yeah, but you didn't. Never mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, never mind. I, I feel like that part's implied. But do you think it's a wishbone or a porn? I feel like it has to be wishbone because it's just a shitty porn name. Correct. This one's not even a pun. It's based on Nikolai Golgo's The Inspector General. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these uh, wishbone titles don't make much sense. Okay, I have to, I just, I, God, I'm so uncomfortable. Um, What? I still have the Wishbone page up, and I I have to look something else. I'm I'm trying to look up, okay, so if you, it's a song? What is this? I'm excited for whatever it is you're about to. So there's a Wishbone episode called, um, Dances with dogs. What would you assume that's a retelling of? Hello. Dances with wolves. Which is what I did. But I don't think Dances with Wolves was a book. I don't think it was based on anything. I think it was original to the film. Oh, no. Dances with Wolves is a novel. But it's not the novel that the Wishbone episode is listing them doing a version of they're doing a version of the story of the deathless voice which when i google just seems to be a song that like an a like a traditional thing that has to do with with indigenous peoples that doesn't take place during the civil war the way dances with wolves does I have no clue, man. You- and Dances with Wolves was only turned into a novel after Kevin-, Kevin Costner told the author to publish it as a novel. Ugh. He also posted published a sequel on September 4th, 2001. Which seems like a bad day to publish... Anything? Yeah. So, like, I'm just very confused. Okay, so I'm going through the list of the Wishbone episodes because you've unlocked something that I just... <laughs> and in season two, the Prince of Wags, they adapted Henry IV, part one. Oh my god, why? What? <laughs> Joe is elected captain of his basketball team and learns what it means to be a leader. I am assuming that a lot of our listeners have not read Henry IV, but that is not the moral of Henry IV. Like, it is if you only read part what? one. Oh my god. See, what's weird is I thought they were going to be a lot of Bible stories or re- Bible 
No, like, like, like that's the thing is that like even though like we had a bunch of the this is what's so weird about the school that I went to is like most people when you talk to them about going to Catholic school for like K through eight like I did they watched like a lot of Veggie Tales and like shit like that we did not watch Veggie Tales we watched really weird mo- religious movies from the fifties and then our library was not full of like religious books it was like fucking Wishbone and series of unfortunate events and Harry Potter and it's just like what is happening here. <laughs> Um, and like Shelley Duvall was in one of these episodes. What is happening? What? What are you googling ferociously? I'm trying to remember. This might be the. I don't know 100 percent if this is the same series as when the kid stole and drew the picture of Jesus. But another one I remember they showed us in CCD was uh, McGee and Me. Did you guys McGee watch that in Catholic and school? Me. It, uh, it is a little. It's like a little cartoon man who I guess was like the conscious conscience in the in the in the, in the in the boy's head, and like the boy's live action. No, I have never seen this before in my life. Oh, but they're all on Pure Flix. Huh? The Christian There's, Netflix. The- I did not know that was Dude, a thing. Oh my god. Pure Flix, yeah. They make they're the ones who make those God is not dead movies. That there are like three or four of now. See, Pure Flix also sounds pornographic. <laughs> you can join for your first month for 99 cents with their Easter special right now. <laughs> oh, I, um, I gotta binge McGee and me and then cancel the free trial. They, so yeah, because they have shit, there's a guy, like their founder is this guy named David A.R. White, and he's in a lot of their, like, movies. Um, Yeah, there are, sorry, there are four God is Not Dead movies now. Um, And they make no sense. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen just the trailers for those movies, and I'm like, cool, bro. Well, because it gets into like like the episode that he the one the episode the movie he stars in um as like a pastor is the third one called God is Not Dead: A Light in the Darkness, and that movie is about like a church that's like adjacent to a college campus, and so a bunch of kids on the college campus are trying to get it closed because there shouldn't be a church on a college campus, even though. It's that it's happens not all on the time. Yeah. And that it's and also, like yeah, not it's also not really on, on campus. campus. Yeah, you can't really get mad for something being across the street. I don't and know. so like a kid throws a brick through the window and the brick perfectly hits a gas line in the basement. So when one of the priests goes downstairs to investigate, he turns on a broken light bulb, which causes a spark in a room that gas has been pour- being poured into. So it blows up and he dies. And it becomes like this whole fucking thing. And it's the weirdest shit. Legal Eagle did, <laughs> Legal Eagle did a video on it. And I watched his whole little recap because I love him. Um, Wasn't the first movie just about like kids in college, like going up on in front of their class lectures and being like, I think God's real. No, it's okay. So the first one is also a really fucked up argument where the first one is a philosophy teacher walks into a class, his philosophy, like 101 class or some shit like that on the first day. Where you're literally so like, like I, I took a philosophy class in my early days of college where like I was a little bit more religious than I am now. Not in like a shitty way. I was never religious in a shitty way, but like I just had more like, ah, uh, yes, this is something I do on the weekends type thing about it. Yeah, I understood so, that in philosophy, you had to challenge that idea. Yeah, so anyways, um, the professor, it is made clear from the get-go that he is an atheist, and he walks into class on the first day and says, we are never going to be able to get through this class if you do not accept today that God is not dead. So I need all of you right now to write down on a piece of paper, or I need you to know that God is dead. So right now, before we can even start this class, I need you to write down on a paper that God is dead. Um, and... The main character, Josh, who is an evangelical Christian, is like, no, (laughs) I'm not doing that. Um, And so his professor is like, okay, if you're going to prove to me that God is not dead for the rest of the semester, I'm just going to teach about how God is dead and you have to debate with me to prove that he's not, which no philosophy professor is doing. (laughs) 
Um, my philosophy teacher like allowed people to be like, well, I say this, but like, what would, but like, he, he I don't know, man, like literally philosophy one-on-one, you just kind of have to accept you're going to have a conversation about like, is religion real? And the he, teacher does not care what you walk out of that room with, but that is like the, I don't think a philosophy professor that is not an atheist exists. If anyone is listening, please reach out. I don't mean to make sweeping generalizations, but like, you know, you go, hey, that's a philosophy professor. Is he an atheist or not? My money, nine times out of 10, going on atheist. Yeah. Um. So then like, they're having these debates for a while and the kid goes, well, why do you hate God? And the professor like throws his podiums like, cause God killed my mother. And it's, whoa, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, Dean Cain is in it. It's like a whole fucking thing. So that's yeah, the, f- Dean Cain? uh, the guys from duck dynasty are also in it because they fund like a lot of these movies. And then it ends with a Christian rock b- group called the Newsboys playing their song, God Is Not Dead. Love it. Oscar winner. Yeah. Um. Oh, also there's an entire subplot where the, another girl in the class, Aisha, who is Muslim, is convinced by Radisson, like by the student Josh, that being Muslim is bad and she secretly converts to Christianity and her father beats the shit out of her yikes it's bad like it's really problematic and they just get worse the next one is the one that melissa joan hart is in like oh no sabrina oh yeah dude she's an evangelical christian did you not know that but she promoted witchcraft for so long (laughs) yeah and then she married an evangelical christian man who went i control your life now and she went okay it's her and cameras candace cameron burr are like in that realm um so yeah so she's in the second one but is and candace she's Cam- wasn't candace cameron always like that because isn't kurt cameron her brother and like he always made like straight to dvd religious movies kirk cameron who are you yeah that is um let me see let me see what no he converted as an adult oh yeah he was an atheist until he was in his 20s and then he became a born-again christian so what oh let me guess what happened he didn't get cast in anything except christian movies and i was like okay and no he was in growing pains i mean with fucking alan thick but how old was he when he was in that he was a child star that's what i mean i said as he got older like as he got older he stopped getting cast and so he was like no, because, like, Growing Pains was on for a long time. Like, he became a born-again Christian during Growing Pains. And then, like, cut off all contact with the cast. Because there's a Good Morning America interview that was, like, really, like, big when we were in, like, eighth grade where Alan Thick was, like, Kirk makes his own choices. And for a lot of people, it's extreme. But, like, he was also a child star, which is not the greatest way to grow up. So, like, I don't want to judge his religious beliefs or his spiritual life. Like, that's his. Like, it's very much Alan Thicke trying to be like, none of us really know what's going on with him. But I also don't want to offend him. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then he stopped getting cast and stuff because part of his, like, conversion to Christianity was he was like, I won't have any on-screen kisses unless my wife is playing the character I'm kissing. Bro. Yeah. Um, And him uh, and his wife have, like, an online, like, marriage course in some shit. It's wild. And he's published I'm a sure you books. could learn a lot from that. <laughs> um, But, yeah, and then... Yeah, so the second one is Melissa Joan Hart as, like, an AP history teacher that, like, she starts comparing Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. to the Sermon on the Mount, which, like, no. Not good luck. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and it's just, like, very weird and like one of the other kids like a couple other kids in the class their parents get mad that she started teaching about sermon on the mount in an ap history course um and it becomes a huge she gets sued for like the separation of church and state and some shit and like 
It's yeah, very weird. weird. And they all take place in the same universe because uh, David A.R. White plays the same guy, Pastor David Hill, in every movie. Like, oh, so there's like a connected universe. Yeah. Like this is like this like very strange world that they've created where like every day a Christian is being sued for something stupid. It's It's that like Christian prosecution mentality thing. Yeah. It's like the whole thing. Um, because like, yeah, you are teaching AP history in a public school. There's no reason for you to pull out a Bible and be reading about reading from it. Like, no, um, they're like, yeah, your principal got mad at you because you're not <laughs> like you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Um, and so then like in the judge is basically like well unless you issue an apology um we're going to strip you of your teaching license which is not really how these things are handled um and then the the thing that's like so crazy about the second one is the the lawyer representing the school board Literally the first line of his opening statement to the jury is this lawsuit will prove once and for all that God is dead. Which like, that is not how any lawyer anywhere is opening up a like, talk about a way to fucking uh, alienate the jury. Jesus fucking Christ. What does that even mean? Oh my God. I hate people that make shit like this. This is the stuff that Gina Carano's in now, right? No, she's in the stuff that fucking date. Dave Shapiro, uh, Ben Shapiro is produced. But I, I, it, I feel like it's all got the same energy. That's kind of what I mean. Yeah, it's all like it's that weird, like Christian, like persecution crap, and like it's just very strange. Um, and it's just like, and the last one they came out is called "We the God Is Not Dead, We the People," and it's about like. Social services gets called on a group of parents that are homeschooling their kid and, like, put the whole curriculum together with each other and their pastor. And, like, somebody calls social services on them and they come in and take the kids because the social, like, the homeschooling isn't sufficient to the, like, state guidelines. Which is, like, not how that works. (laughs) No. No. And, like, um, Janine Pereiro is in that movie. Like, she plays the judge that this lawsuit gets brought in Of course she is. It's fucking Judge Janine. But, like, yeah, like, the whole thing is that it's basically, like, what you're teaching these kids isn't in line with the state common core, which you are required by law to follow. Which, like, yeah. And no one's taking your kids for that. They're just like, hey, you need to do this. And, like, you can add in whatever religious shit you want onto it as long as you're following the fucking common core. That's how, like, the Catholic school I went to operated. We had to follow the state's, um, like, base education thing um, so that my education would be, like, similar to yours. And then we had added in shit that was, like, religious. Yeah, it's why, like, I understand the standardized testing maybe is not the best form of teaching or education, but it's why I believe in just the concept of, like, a regents exam that goes out to the whole state in the sense of, like, this is the stuff that, at the bare minimum, we need to make the standard. So, like, I don't know if there's a better way to test that that's actually what the kids learned, but... I think that, like, you need to have, like, a baseline For minimum. For creating the curriculum, like, having that baseline shit is helpful. The issue with Common Core was just, because you and I were graduating as Common Core was getting integrated into the That's what upset was- me. Like, Common Core was not perfect, but the idea behind it of, like, hey, let's try to normalize the curriculum across the board so that way, like, somebody who goes to a public school in New York versus somebody who went to, like, a private school in Florida are not vastly different in like the stuff that they think are are real and not real you know or even public schools from both states it annoyed me that my physics teacher was like well common core is pushing more writing so now i have to give you guys essays and i raised my hand i was like listen i'm not even mad that they're asking for essays in science class now we graduate in six months how much more can they change 
Well, and it's also like, I don't know if they did this for you guys, but um, because I was in AP classes at the end of the year after we had taken our AP exams, they would come in and be like, we're testing common core tests and we're trying to figure out if they're like the right level of difficulty, right? And so so I was given an English test that was supposed to be meant for common core ninth grade students. And I was somebody who had been in honors and AP English all through high school and had gotten like fives on my AP exam. I failed the test. My entire class did just because we didn't understand what the questions were asking us. Yeah. So they did some of the common core like pre-tests on the grade younger than us Mm -hmm. rather than our grade at my school. And yeah, a lot of them were like coming out of that test being like, that was brutal. And I know it's not graded, but holy shit. Like it's still, I took a hard test and I feel like somehow this is going to come back to haunt me. It was just very like, and it, cause then when we went over it to do like the survey thing with our teacher, our teacher was like, well, you all answered like this, but that's not what the question was asking. And I was like, and we were all like, but that's what we thought it, we all thought it was asking the question. Everyone is, con- if everyone is confused, no, something is wrong with the test. Yeah. And that's what it came down to. And like, a, a, I'm not trying to sound like an asshole, but like a senior in an AP English exam should be able to pass a ninth grade ninth English grade. test. No, like you're right. Like- no, after the only AP class I took was AP uh, US because of course I did. Um, and my teacher, like, you know, we took the APs. He was like, Hey, you guys just took the AP. And I think a push is like one of the harder APs out there because it's the most commonly taken AP. They like, are like, Hey, we're not going to make uh, a it push that easy. and AP European history are the two. Hardest. Yeah. And so he was like, you guys like deserve a break. It's like, we'll watch a movie for a week. And after the movie was over, he was like, listen, you guys are going to laugh. But the, he goes, the AP test is like for college you need to pass the regents to graduate. And so just by any chance that someone here is at risk of failing that, we are going to go over what, like, the actual literal requirement for you guys to get the hell out of here are. And, like, each day was, like, a different unit, and, like, he'd give us, like, a 10-question quiz. And it was most of us, like, every day those tests would range from 80s to 100s. Like, nobody was doing bad. And everybody would laugh and we'd go over. He goes, like, guys, I know, but this is actually the part that matters. See, that's why we... Kesham did it very differently, where we took our... If you were in AP classes, you took your Regents exam in the January offering. See, the reason they didn't do that for us, and maybe this goes into school size, is because they didn't think it would be fair to technically test you on the stuff you hadn't hit yet, even though it was the basics. Like, if you take AP US, yeah, you're going to learn about, like, for example, the Cold War, because that's, like, one of the later units. Way more in-depth than the people who weren't in it, but you still kind of had to learn it before you could be assumed to maybe have to write an essay about it. Yeah, Ketchum was just kind of like, you guys know enough about it to get through this halfway through the year. So, like... This is kind of how we're doing it. And then, they got an like, for English, they also... I don't remember if they did it for... If you were in AP math, because I wasn't in AP math, because I suck at math. I was barely in regular math. Exactly. I barely got through Regents math. Like... <laughs> my, my mom... Uh, we were seeing my sister's school play a couple of years ago. And, you know, me and my sisters all went to the same high school and stuff. And some kid passed me. He goes, oh, hi, Jordan. I go, hi. And he walks away. And my mom's like... How'd you know him? Was he, he wasn't in your grade? Because my, my God, my school was small enough that my mom knew most of the people in my grade. And we were talking to a different teacher at the time. And she goes, she was like, wait, wait, how do you know him? You guys were like two grades apart. And I was like, we were in the same math class when I was a senior because he was advanced and I was behind. <laughs> yeah. And it's my, my, it made my mom laugh like harder than she wants to like admit that she laughed to this day. <laughs> yeah. And so like. But they did it for AP English, too, because with English, it really didn't matter. Like, if you're in AP English your senior year or your junior year, you can pass the English Regents in January. But you don't take a English Regents in senior year. Junior year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, because, yeah. Cause the we English take- Regents is really weird, the way they do it in New York. Where like you don't it's 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 the one course you don't get every year and you're not even Oh you do get English every year. Oh, you mean you don't get a regents every year? You don't get a regents every yes. year. 
And you're supposed to use this. And I understand that they can't be like, hey, every school in the country has to read the exact same books. Like, I, I get why it's a little bit different. But it is weird that it has nothing to do with actual content. It is more skill based. Yeah, it's like you. <coughs> Jesus, sorry. Making it's sure just, you learned everything you were supposed to. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying they should completely make the test like a reading comprehension on the same books for everyone in the state. And these are books you read three years ago. I think it's just it's it's that weird hurdle to get behind when you're preparing for that region. So that it's not like a bio where you're sitting down with a book of facts or math yeah, where you're it's sitting down like, with a book of rules. It's a lot of going over like literary uh, techniques techniques and shit like that because it's also they give you the stories on the test like you don't know what you're going to be reading until you get the exam and they're always short stories and then it's it's when the essay comes that you can pull from any book you've read oh yeah because i wrote about great gatsby mice and men mice and men and death of a salesman because they're the ones i know the best <laughs> oh we never uh, read death of a salesman in high school we did yeah we read I we read a we lot did, of plays. Uh, see, the plays that we did were, and I'm not even going to include Shakespeare because those are all plays. Yeah. But like the one, the plays that we did were, that come to my mind at least, were The Crucible and um, Inherit the Wind. We did plays that I did in high school were, not counting Shakespeare, and in no particular order, Fences, A Raisin in the Sun, The Crucible, Death of a Salesman, um, All My Sons, All My Sons, there's two more that I'm forgetting. Oh, Hedda Gabler. Um, Bless you. It's a Henrik Ibsen play. Hedda Gabler, I love that play. And um, Miss Julie. Those are the seven plays I had to read outside of Shakespeare in high school. Yeah, no, we just had the two. And then we read, the, like, your other kind of, like, basic shit, To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, which I did not appreciate as a 15-year-old. I read it again last year and appreciated it way more. Um, I don't think I was, like, smart enough to understand it as a child. Um, See, I, I don't know if, it, like, I wasn't smart enough to understand or if I just didn't give enough of a shit to try to understand yeah um i understood it way better and like actually legitimately really enjoyed it when i read it as an adult um yeah we read a lot of weird shit we also read like the princess bride yellow wallpaper which i fucking hated um a separate piece which i also hated great gatsby mice and men Yeah, we read Great Gatsby and Mice and Men in 11th grade. We read Lord of the Flies. We didn't ever read Lord of the Flies. We we read Lord of the Flies. So 10th grade was all like, like each year had like a different theme. Mm -hmm. And I don't, honest to God, can't remember specifically what the theme is in 9th grade. Because it was like the Pearl, To Kill a Mockingbird, Antigone, and Romeo and Juliet. Oh, you did something completely different than what we did. We did um, Ed- a whole section on Edgar Allan Poe. We did that too, but that's because that was the big read that was the that big read year. that year in New York. But we did that whole section on Edgar Allan Poe. We read the Odyssey. We re- well, we did that in ninth grade the too. The yeah. Odyssey, uh, Romeo and Juliet, Speak. That's Wappinger's Central School District's big thing is to make ninth grade classes read Speak. What speak? It's about a ninth grade girl who gets raped. Um, oh. Right before she's by a senior at her high school, right before she starts ninth grade. And she basically ends up with a form of selective mutism because of it and like loses all of her friends because they refuse to believe that it was like a sexual assault. It's a really, really good book. And it was turned into a movie with, with Kirsten, Kirsten Stewart. Stewart. It's a good movie, too. Yeah, it's a good movie. Um, yeah, so we did Speak, Edgar Allan Poe, Romeo and Juliet, The Odyssey. Um, and then we may have read the pearl in ninth grade and then I didn't do it because I read the pearl in eighth grade. Um, because at, at St. Mary's, we had an English class where we learned like grammar for 50 minutes. And then we had a reading class where we just read literature and talked about it. Um,
What are you looking yeah. at? Yeah. I was just looking at speak. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ninth grade was, yeah, I forgot about the, that with the Odyssey as well. And then 10th grade was all like, I guess it was all supposed to be stuff that would like talked about society slash politics because it was like Julius Caesar, Knight, which we then watched uh, Schindler's List as an accompaniment to it. <laughs> Yeah, heavy, heavy course. Um, oh God, guys! Will really quick before I lose this thought, covering how Ketchum hit covered and handled teaching the Holocaust in tenth grade was insane. Whether you were in AP English or not AP honors English or regular English, you read Night at the same time. It was the only time anything you were reading overlapped. We all read Night at the same time. At the same time, we are learning about World War II and the Holocaust in world history and that's where we watch schindler's list and a really dark french documentary about the holocaust and then we read night and watched ellie wiesel speak a bunch and then they had holocaust survivors come to our school to speak to us and it was just a really rough two weeks for so all our, of us mentally <laughs> so our school did it more incremental where like there was a lesson on it in eighth grade and then there was 10th grade, yes, you hit both on it in in uh, English class and in in global class. And then I don't remember if this was in eighth grade or in high school, but I know we went on top of the we, when we took a trip to Washington, D.C. and we went to the Holocaust Museum there. We went to a Holocaust Museum in New York City as well as a class. And my school did it in like smaller increments, but always made sure to do it because the the principal I had in middle school, who also then came to my high school the last two years, it was the same principal. His, I don't remember if it's his parents or his grandparents are Holocaust survivors. So like he makes sure that that is something that is definitely taught, but like I also makes it more of a slower burn. And like, I guess thinks that not only should we not hit it with them all at once, but we should remind them of this throughout their academic career rather than just like, oh, it's one giant unit and then it goes away. Yeah. I don't really remember if I learned about it anytime before. Like, in school, I learned about it, obviously, from my parents uh, before that. But, like, I don't really remember it being covered too heavily when we I did was it in, in... Yeah, we did it in seventh grade as well, because we didn't read the whole thing, but we read excerpts of the Diary of Anne Frank. Yeah, we didn't read the Diary of Anne Frank. To this and day, then... I have never read the Diary of Anne Frank. Yeah, Night destroyed me, and then I had to read Mouse senior year, and that destroyed me. And yeah, I don't remember whether or not our <laughs> global unit overlapped with our night unit. What I do know is depending on the teacher you had, and I had the one where this didn't happen, for some kids, reading Animal Farm lined up with the Russian Revolution in global. But we I didn't was in the class the where Russian it didn't Revolution. line up. <laughs> we straight up did not learn about the Russian Revolution. Um, no, we did. Yeah, we but did like, not we cover, learned... but we also didn't read any George Orwell. Which has always been interesting to me. Is Animal Farm George Orwell? Yeah. Oh. Huh. I forgot. Yeah. That was just the one book where, like, for some reason, my mom knew that book. Everybody knows that book. Everybody knows one George Orwell book, here. and they either know Animal Farm or they know 1984. Yeah, but you forget my mom did not grow up in America. Which is why I'm going with that. I understand her knowing Animal Farm and not 1984. Yeah. Well, it's also that my grandpa also liked that book. I was like, this is getting weird. <laughs> like, too yeah. many people are just f in on the book I'm trying to read for class. It was a big, it, that book means means a lot to people. Um, yeah. And then, and we also read Lord of the Flies in 10th grade. So that was all about, like, society and, like, society. books that, basically, that's basically <laughs> what it was. <laughs> And then tenth, and then eleventh grade was like the American Dream. So it was like Huckleberry Finn and The Great Gatsby and of Mice and Men. And I this don't is know when what else we re read a lot of Arthur Miller. Was our American Dream? It was in eleventh grade. We did the American Dream, and that's when we read Death for Salesman, Fences, um, and a bunch of other like Great Gatsby, like all that crap. Were you in the honors courses? I was in AP in eleventh grade. Yeah, I wasn't. So maybe that's why we didn't get as many. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the other thing is I had a book to read every day of every week of my AP, of my AP classes. No. And even into honor, like we, a lot of the time in our honors classes, we were reading two books at once. 
Yeah, and our teacher like told us that if for people like if they couldn't necessarily understand like the vernacular that they were using in Huck Finn, that there was like a narration that she would let us use if we read along with the book like at home, mm-hmm. where like it would because it was just like the southern pronunciations and like sometimes they'll just have like words with missing letters and apostrophes and you're supposed to just know what they're referring to. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then 12th grade was just like a mishmash where I know it was the crucible inherent the wind catcher in the rye. Yeah. And I mean, Hamlet. Grade. Um senior year was a lot at Ketchum because you had five options essentially. Uh, for your senior English class, which were you could be in AP, you could be in Dutchess Community College English, you could be in regular English, or you could be in a more focused English, depending on what your grades had been in your English classes previous years, because you don't have to take a region senior year. Yeah, we didn't um, get all those choices. So um, you really weren't reading the same books as everybody else unless you were in their English class. In that class. class. Yeah, no. because like the senior year, our teachers like picked their themes of like what the class was going to be surrounding that year. Yeah. Um, so like I read a lot of Greek plays in my AP English class, and we read like Jane Eyre, a lot of the Bronte sisters, a lot of Jane Austen. Like it was like that kind of like classics vibe. But Victoria barely read in her senior English class because she took DCC English, but they had essays due every week. Yeah, so I, so my school used to rotate between Hamlet mm-hmm. and Macbeth for the seniors. Like one year they would do one, one year they would do the next. Mm-hmm. And I just happened to land on the Hamlet year. And then two years later in community college, I once again did Hamlet. And I was like, well, I basically remember this because that was yeah. a whole fucking unit. And <laughs> we were in the middle of, me and my sister ended up in the same English class in community college because like I skipped a semester where I was like, I'll, I'll do English next semester. Let me focus on like my other courses right now. Mm-hmm. Um, which is fine. Like you could just, as long as I fucking got it done, my parents didn't care. Yeah. And so me and my sister ended up in the same one. Teacher adored me because he was also a fucking doofus. And I'm sure if he heard me say this, he'd be like, I am a fucking doofus. And <laughs> we were in, and Nicole would get annoyed. My sister would get annoyed because I would like say shit and he'd laugh. Mm-hmm. And then we found out that Prince died in the middle of class. I don't remember how it happened. I think it like happened. We People got the notifications on their phones like as we were entering co- class. And we were in our Hamlet unit. And so I just went, good night, sweet Prince. And he fucking lost it. Oh, God. <laughs> to the point that Nic- my sister like would come up to me like a year after I graduated be like, he still asks about you. He always wants to know how you're doing. And it's so annoying. Do you know what's funny to me? What? If I had not had to do Hamlet senior year of college, I would never have read it in my school career. Really? Mm-hmm. Because I'm surprised that if you if somebody was like like knew what your courses and your college career was and what mine was and we're like one of us has had to read Hamlet twice I feel like everybody would have guessed it was you. No, I've read Macbeth six million times. <laughs> like uh, See, that's when, the difference. When I was in high school, we did Romeo and Juliet. Was freshman year, you always did Romeo and Juliet. Sophomore year, you did The Tempest or Twelfth Night. And for a while, Taming of the Shrew, and then they realized Taming of the Shrew is really, really fucked up, and they, like, phased that out as an option. Um, Ours was Julius fucking Caesar. (laughs) Our Shakespeare's 7th grade was Julius Caesar. You got all the ones that, to me, sound more interesting. And then uh, junior year was Macbeth, and senior year, you didn't necessarily read Shakespeare. We did, but we read Romeo, or not Romeo and Juliet, Julius Caesar and Henry no richard the third see junior year we read no shakespeare because it's all the american dream they're also all americana authors because yay yeah. america and propaganda um eighth grade we also did <laughs> eighth Jordan, grade we a also- lot of the american dream novels and plays that you read are not propaganda for america they're just about how fucking terrible it is to live here well don't we all dream of owning a big house and then you're just getting fucking shot in our pool Spoilers you know are for people the Great that Gatsby. believe the entire book of Great Gatsby is like an acid trip that Nick is on and that it's like a dream. Okay, you can make and I hate that. Why would it be because, that? Like I hate it. Why would it be that? That upsets me because you can make anything. You can make anything. Oh, well, it's actually the main character is in a dream. Like 
I didn't want to have to talk about this because I was worried I'd cry on the podcast today. But like for 20 years, people have been predicting that Ash Ketchum's final episode would be him waking up from a coma, finding out that this was all in his head because he got like struck by lightning in the first episode. Yeah. Like, it's just like, why would they do that? Why? Why is it? Ha- that I think I think do? it happened in like one show, and people are like, "Wow, that's wild!" And like now everything. And it's be like that. it it's happens in like Fight Club and like American Psycho. At the end, the author throws stuff in that's like, "This may all have been in his head, but it may not have been." Like it's that's the point, and then people are like, "Yes." It also pisses me off when people fall back on those things too much. Like you, you've talked. Me and you have talked about how like yes, and how I met your mother. Ted is an unreliable narrator, but there is. 70% truth in what we're seeing. Exactly. Like it the dumb plot holes and maybe the things that seem super exaggerated can be and maybe how we view certain characters as being like bitchy or mean or in the right or in the wrong through his unreliable narration. Ted is not making shit up out of his ass. Yeah. Like it's not it's so fucking weird. It's all just so weird. I think my I think one of my favorite dumb plot holes that can be summed back up into Ted's an unreliable narrator is that there is a smaller character that Robin dates. I'm pretty sure it's Nick. That is also like a character that like she went on a single date with like three episodes or three seasons before. Mm -hmm. And so it's just easily like, yeah, Ted, Ted looks, Ted thinks that they are the same person 20 years later. Yeah. Yeah. Like Ted's shit can be explained for like smaller stuff. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> I was trying to make that a smooth edit that you just ruined. No, Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. But you know what? We are actually hitting the hour and a half mark. Anyway, so let's wrap things up. Any final thoughts? Any other topics you want to talk about, Liren? Um, My final thing is I'm so excited for Queen Charlotte. The trailer dropped this week. I'm so excited, Jordan. I'm so excited. <laughs> listen, listeners, tea time's going to be back. It's going to be back. It's going to be back strong. We're going to have the time of our lives with it. The time of my life. I'm so excited. Six episodes just of like drama and intrigue. And I'm so excited. Uh, oh! It's going to be so good. And like little Violet, <laughs> little Lady Danbury and like, oh, and her and the queen. I did not realize that she was going to be like in the queen's court and like the queen's confidant. Oh, so excited. That's why, it's why they're besties. And we're meeting the character that you you always say you want to be, the guy that's like always just like with the queen. Um, we meet him and like his origin, all that shit. I'm so yeah, excited. For, uh but that won't be happening for a while. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, all those places, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.